Welcome to uh, my presentation of the three T's of internet marketing. My name is Joseph Dowdy, and a little bit about me. Uh, I am a WordPress host. I have uh, several dozen uh, clients uh, that I host their WordPress sites. People who are mostly uh, entrepreneurs, uh, coaches, that sort of thing. And that's at electronicwordofmouth.com. Uh, before that, I launched uh, Dan Pointer's Global Ebook Awards a few years ago. I was uh, very privileged to be a part of uh, Dan's program to honor ebook authors, and that was something that we basically put together, and I helped him to launch that in his inaugural year. And I also launched the social media strategy for Brag Live Foods before that, and I was a business advisor for the Small Business Development Center at Santa Monica College, and before that I was a tech guru for a lot of corporations, including Southern California Edison uh, and a few other very large uh, organizations like that. I was also a trainer for many companies. Uh, delivering software training uh, for companies like CompUSA. And before that, I was a broadcast journalist, combat correspondent in the Marine Corps for eight years. So let me tell you a little bit about the intention here. This training is meant for not just my existing blog hosting customers, but also for people who are not. And you see this picture here. This is my lovely five-year-old daughter who I asked if she would like to help me make this presentation today. So these are pictures that I shot of her and uh, modified for this presentation using a online software called bfunky.com and I'm using a Prezi presentation software for this presentation. So the first thing that you should know is that this approach is to help you avoid overwhelm. No one really wants to have too many choices and internet marketing is something that is extremely overwhelming to people. There are so many options for how you can use internet marketing for your business and the interesting thing about it is, is that there's always something new coming up every day and the entire landscape for internet marketing changes on a very frequent basis. One day you have a new social media platform that looks like it's going to be great. The next day it's gone, replaced by something even better. So it's very exciting and it's also uh, very overwhelming for a lot of people. Also, the one intention of this training is to help you make better choices. So uh, it's easy to choose between a lot of different uh, programs that are out there, but it's not so easy to choose between ones that are very similar. For example, Pinterest, Instagram, Tumblr, and TwitPic are all image sharing platforms, and they are all interconnected with other social media platforms, and they basically offer the same thing. Uh, it's just a matter of trying to decide for yourself which one is best. So sometimes it can be difficult to seem like, oh, well, you know, it's an easy choice to make. Maybe it's not. So this strategy that I will teach you today, the three T's of internet marketing, will help to make it easier to choose some of those things. So also this is designed to help you save time. So you should ask yourself, for example, how many times per week should you blog, make a video, do an update on your Facebook, update your status. And so the strategies that I'm going to give you today will help you to determine how many times per week you should be doing that. It's also designed to help you save money. I am sure that you've probably been sent plenty of offers if you use internet marketing at all professionally to buy this software or that plugin or this platform or buy into this new thing. There is a very easy way that you could just simply go broke trying to buy everything that is offered to you. And it's also uh, the kind of like somebody saying to you, oh yes, you can certainly save money if you come to my casino. Well, it's kind of a ridiculous proposition to think that you would ever save money if you went to a casino, but there are people who spend money on internet marketing in much the same way because all advertising is a type of gambling. It's not really an illegal type of gambling, but every dollar that you spend on internet marketing is not guaranteed to produce a return. So, also, it's designed to help you make more profit, this approach that we're going to be taking. One of the reasons why is because some people spend like six figures on their internet marketing, and they may make seven figures in return. 
and that means that you're making a profit. Uh, I actually have a friend of mine who, for many years, as a matter of fact, he's still doing this, is selling an ebook online, and it wasn't uncommon for him to have an expense in the uh, six-figure range and to also have a profit that exceeded that. So as long as he was making more money than he was spending, then he was profitable. But, you know, one of the things that you want to consider is that it's, very easy to get in over your head with spending money, but you know it's important, even more important, to make sure that you're making more back. Also, one of the intentions is that you don't get bored to death with this presentation. Uh, death by PowerPoint is certainly not something that's very funny whenever it's your time and your business that we're talking about. Uh, so one of the ways that you can make sure that you get a lot of value out of this is to get out a piece of paper, and I will walk you through the three T's, and you can apply it to something that you would like. I will provide an example at the end, um, but you can do this during the presentation if you like. So if you get yourself a piece of paper, then you can uh, take notes on this. And uh, if you're watching this as a video, then go ahead and pause the video and get yourself a piece of paper. And you can use this strategy while you are watching the video. So that's the new approach. These are my intentions, and here we go. The first of the three T's of internet marketing is to think what works well for others and why. So, for example, if you see somebody who is online doing something in particular that you like, and they're doing it, and they're, they look like they're successful at what it is that they're doing, and you know that they're successful at what it is they're doing, and you want to do it too, then that actually gives you something to work on. So whenever I say to get out a piece of paper to work on something, what I want you to do is I want you to think about what it is that you are considering doing with internet marketing. It may be that you're thinking about, you know, Google AdWords. It may be that you're thinking about doing a YouTube video. It may be that you're thinking about getting a newsletter software like MailChimp or AWeber, something like that. So, you know, write down the answers to the questions of what these things are that you're thinking of working on. So what is something that works well for others and why? So write down what that is. What do you like about what this thing is that you're talking about that's on the Internet? Were you excited when you saw it for the first time and you were thinking, wow, that would be something perfect for me? So let's start with that premise that you know what you like and that people who are like you also do too. So that gives you a great place to start. And it's kind of like if, if you have a competitor that you respect and they're doing something, then that may be certainly something that you wanted to do too. It could be that if you have somebody that you uh, use as a service uh, and they're aligned with what it is that you do, they're in the same profession, or somebody is just kind of like you know a kindred spirit, if they're doing something and you like it, chances are that it could be good for you too. So the next thing to think about is what fits your style. So you got to ask yourself, what is the style that you want to present to people? What is going to be your public persona? Are you going to have a very clean style or a very grungy style, a very corporate style or a very hippie style? Do you want to have more something like yoga or something with weightlifting? Is it going to be more nature or more skyscrapers? Is it going to be something ocean themed or is it going to be something very clinical and medicine themed? Is it going to be more psychedelic or more technological? Is it going to be rock and roll or is it just going to be something else completely altogether? So these are things that you want to think about whenever you're thinking of something for internet marketing. Is it going to be something that fits and supports your style that you are presenting to the public? What is it that works with what you have? So whenever you think about what it is that you've currently got, you want to think about what can you add to it. You know, you don't want to think about just throwing out everything that you've got just so that you can have something else. The idea behind this approach is to avoid thinking that sort of thinking, where if you're going to try something, that you have to throw the baby out with the bathwater, so to speak. So this is not about 
how do you start over? This is about how do you take what you've got and apply it to what you have. There may be something, um, kind of a, a common thing is that you may see something that's a plug-in or a piece of software, but it doesn't work with your platform. So it's important to know that you want to find something that works with what you have instead of finding something that doesn't work, which will then force you to completely redo everything that you're doing. So you always do have a blank canvas to start with, but it can include those things that you're already working with. So you don't need to start over every single time. What is it that fits with your budget and with your schedule? So it'd be easy to go to somebody who is a solution provider, service provider, and just say, I just want to start over. I just want everything that you have to offer or you know, saying something like, I don't know what I want, just give me whatever works. Well, it's very easy to say that, but I gotta tell you something, that's not what you want. What you want is you want to think strategically about what it is that you are interested in and think about how you can uh, start one piece at a time and implement things. So it's always best to take an incremental approach because if you don't, it's gonna create overwhelm. So forget the overwhelm, start with what it is that you've got, add a piece at a time, and then as you progress, you'll find over time that you will have the, an opportunity to have a lot more success than if you didn't. So the next question to think about would be, why will it work for me? So dovetailing on the previous idea, having a blog is a process. It's always something that you change over time. Now, it's true that you can completely change the theme of a blog or the way that it looks and feels overnight or like in three seconds, you can change that to something else completely different. But, you know, the important thing to know is that even though you're doing that, you want to continue to incorporate the things that you're already using. So just because you change the way that something looks doesn't mean that you're changing the thing itself. So if you have a web address, just because you change from a blue theme to a green theme, it doesn't mean that what it is that you're providing is any different. Now, it's important to remember that with a blog, like I mentioned, it's always a process. And you got to remember that you're not going to really arrive wherever it is that you plan to go with your blog until you have at least a thousand visitors a day. Once you've got that, then you can say that you've arrived and you can really count on the fact that you have an audience and that when you do something, they're going to see what it is and they're going to follow it. But until you get there, it, you know, it's, you're, you're always in a process of continuing to work on and develop who your audience is and why they follow you, why they're interested in what it is that you have to offer. So that's the first of the three T's of internet marketing, which is to first think of what it is that you want to work on. So if you've got that written down, as far as what it is you want to think, you may write down several things that you think that you would like to use, that's fine. So start by circling one, and then let's just imagine for a moment that you now have that thing, and then you do the second step or the second thing, the three T's of internet marketing, which is to test. That's number two. So whenever you test, you want to remember that largely, whenever you talk about testing, you have to talk about tracking. So you can't actually test something without having a beginning and without having a period of time that you're working with and then having a way of looking at what happened during that time. You could call that tracking. Um, but I call it testing because it encompasses a lot and it picks up right after you think of something it is that you want to then test. So you think of what you want to work on and then you test that thing, which includes tracking. So how do you know that something works? That's the first question that you want to ask yourself. If you're testing whether or not something works, you've got to define what that actually is that works. So there's always going to be something that tests that you can test, but how do you actually know that it works? So the next question that you want to ask yourself is what can you measure? There may be some things about this that you can't measure, but you want to start with what you can measure. So think about things that you're already measuring. Uh, let's say, for example, you've got a blog and you've got a certain amount of traffic to your blog. Then you want to think about, okay, I'm currently at this level. I've got, you know, 20 visitors a day. 
Well, how can I improve on that? You know, maybe I want to double it. Maybe I want to get it to 100 visitors a day. Maybe I want to get it to 500 visitors a day. I want to, you know, uh, multiply my traffic by 10. It's got to be something that is quantifiable and in relationship to what you have already been measuring. You could look at it in terms of sales. You could like look at it in terms of new subscribers to your newsletter. You could look at it look at it any number of ways but the important thing is to take into consideration what you've already been measuring unless it's something that's brand new like for example if you decide that you want to start offering a newsletter and subscribing people well then you're going to start with zero but for the most part when you think of something that you want to work with it's going to be something that you will start by looking at what you've been doing and then figuring out ways of improving it so the next question that you want to ask is how can you monetize this thing that you're going to test? If you could figure out what each customer costs to you to acquire, then you'll know how to measure your return on investment. So if you're spending, you know, $100 a month on acquiring a new customer and you can reliably get a total of 10 new customers, then it's going to be 10 bucks a customer. And just a you know sort of rough ballpark figure there's other ways of doing it like taking all of your expenses figuring out how much profit you're making per person that you acquire that sort of thing but you know just try to make it as simple as possible and think about what it costed you to make new clients happen and then you just divide that by the number of new clients that you've got it's a good rule of thumb. Okay, so then next one is to figure out what that time frame is that you're going to be testing. So what is the time frame? So um, consider that one week is probably a really good time frame to work with. Why? Because it includes Monday and Tuesday through the weekend. So that way you know that you're working with a whole seven days and the next seven days are going to be identical in terms of work week, work day, work weekend, that sort of thing. So it's essential that you always make comparisons based on the same number of days. So if you want, if you prefer to go by month, that's fine. But you got to remember that you're not going to be able to rely on your monthly numbers because it's a month period. So each week that goes in and goes out, it's easy to take a look back at the past seven days and figure out your statistics. So if you're going to test anything, it's important to have a short enough time span that is going to give you the correct information. It's okay to go with a daily figure. And what you do is you can maybe say, okay, every day that I post something, uh, that day plus the next three days are going to tell you how much money you're making uh, for each post that you have. But it's important to know in advance what your measure of time is going to be and then stick with it throughout. So what is your sample size? So you could look over a period of a week and you might actually figure out, okay, I'm going to get an increase in people and that may change. But whenever you look at how effective you are, you don't want to look at how many people you are acquiring newly. What you want to look at is, okay, for every 100 people or every 1,000 people who visit my site, how many sales am I making? That's a sample size. So you are figuring out how many people that you're going to measure and then figure out how effective your advertising is. Are you trying to get people to subscribe to your newsletter? Those are leads. So if you, for every 100 people that visit your site, how many leads are you getting? For every 1,000 people who visit your site, how many leads are you getting? So uh, you also apply this to sales as well. And you want to remember that whenever you're talking about people doing something that you expect having 5% is really an optimal success. So if you have at least 5%, you can say that you're really successful at it. If you have down to less than half a percent, half a percent means it's working, but needs improvement. Uh, you can get it up to 1%, 2%. When you get it to 5%, then you can say, okay, I'm done working on this. I can move on to other things. So Whenever you're testing, you want to ask yourself, did you make money with it or did you increase leads with it? So for those of you that are writing down, you know, what it is that, that you're trying to look at, you got to ask yourself, can you make money with it? Can you increase the number of leads that you've got? Each one of those leads has a value. 
that each lead costs you something. So that's the value of each lead. So having sales and having leads is the only way to know if you're if what you are thinking about doing is ever going to be profitable. There's only one way to know, and that is you you have to try it, you have to test it, and then you'll measure how effective it was. And then we go on to the third T after this, which is after thinking and then testing of something, you go to tweaking it. So whenever you tweak something, it means that you're making a change to it, either for the best, better or worse. And you are going to be thinking about when you do it, what kind of an effect does it have? So the first question that you want to ask yourself is, can you repeat the success so that you can tweak something? So you want to ask yourself, can you actually repeat what happened? So I'll give you an example of this. Uh, when I was working with uh, Fiddlehead, which is a winemaker, uh, it suddenly got this increase in the number of sales of a particular bottle of wine. And, you know, we we're trying to figure out what happened. And what happened was is that Wine Spectator had featured this particular bottle of wine. And so the amount of sales of this wine just went way up. So um, that's not something that you can repeat. Getting media exposure or let's say that it's a holiday, you know, you can repeat your success from holiday to holiday, but you can't figure in your success that you got during a holiday for each week. It's not going to happen. It's not the same thing. Your performance that you have of a particular thing is going to change, and it's important to know whether or not you can reliably have the same results. So if you can't reliably have the same results, then don't try to tweak it until you know that you can. So should you change your measures or should you change your art? So chances are you're not going to need to change your measures, um, but it, there may be times whenever you need to. You may need to rethink what it is that you are measuring to begin with if you're not able to then produce any results with it. So the important thing to know is that it's more likely that you're not going to change your measures, but it's more likely that you will be changing your art. So I can give you some examples of this when I was uh, working with different Google AdWords accounts and I was really good at making really great results happen with just very small changes. You'd be amazed at just the placement of a comma, abbreviating something, changing the uppercase and lowercase of something will take a, an advertisement, which is just all text anyway, for the most part for Google AdWords, and it will suddenly turn an advertisement into a success so that whenever people click on it, you know, they're more likely to buy something. So very small things that you change with the art of something. It could be an image, uh, obviously. It could be, you know, the, the text, but, you know, it could be even something as small as a comma or a dash, something like that. So also, how often can you tweak or retest what it is that you're working with? You may want to make sure that you can test something in a way that can be reproduced every single time in every way. So you don't want to be tweaking something that you can't reliably reproduce. So I know that I kind of said this in, in other ways before, but you just don't want to even mess with something that you can't accurately reproduce all of those things. So for example, I'll give you an example of this. My wife had done a test with Facebook advertising and uh, based on putting in $25, she was able to produce a certain result which gave her a pretty good profit. It pretty much gave her $75 worth of profit uh, and so she got a net of $50. And so I was telling her, okay, let's, let's you know, put in you know, $100 and let's see what happens there. Well, unfortunately, the $100 actually didn't produce the result at all. We would have been better off repeating the $25 a few times and then see whether or not it's going to reliably produce the same numbers as far as profitability goes. That's really a better way to do it to establish a record that something works reliably and then change it. So what can you improve? If you're always doing the same ad for the same amount of time and the same amount of money, well then how do you know what you can improve? Well, 
saying that you know you can actually change everything about something will actually create a lot of overwhelm so if you don't want to really get you know crazy about changing what it is that you're doing then you know you have to look for what you can reproduce reliably just like i was saying you want to stick with things that you tweak by looking at what's reliable so what you can improve upon are small things that's the important thing but only the things that are reproducible so let's say that you're able to reliably reproduce your success with something over time let's say at least three times you put in a certain amount of effort a certain amount of work and then you get the profit back each time and it's a stable bet uh, can you scale it up well you can start scaling it up but whenever you but that's only when you get to a point where you've actually tested every major thing about something so you know uh, you have to change the art a little bit you know um, you change the image you change some of the text you you tweak it a lot after you have successfully tweaked every major aspect of something then you're ready to scale it up if you don't then you don't really know that you've got a winner on your hands it may be that it makes you a profit but it may not be able to weather the storm so you want to make sure that you have tested every part of it tweak every part of it then can you bet the farm as it were so whenever you have really thought everything through and you have tested your ad reliably and then you've tweaked about everything that you've done with your idea then you'll know that you've done all that you can with your eyes wide open about the whole thing and then you're going to be able to then bet the farm you know you can put more money on something and then you'll be able to reliably then scale the thing up and have a lot more success with it because you've learned how to get it successful you can then put more money into it put more time in it put more effort into it and expand but only after you've tweaked everything about it so uh, I'm gonna give you an example of how to apply the three T's to something and this is going to be applying to WordPress hosting now there are people that are watching this video that are my own customers and so for those people I say take a look at what it is that you're currently doing and ask yourself whether or not there's anything that you can improve based on what you see so you'll get everybody watching this will get value no matter what so let's go through this example on how to save time and money and prevent overwhelm with WordPress so first of all what is it that works well with others and why well WordPress is a highly recommended uh, platform uh, recommended by pros on what to use if you're going to run your own blog so um, what is it that you like on the internet okay most non-static websites are WordPress sites chances are if it's a blog two-thirds of the time it's going to be a WordPress blog uh, from my own experience what I've seen is at least four or five times uh, out of six or seven or like four out of five times four out of five times five times out of six it's a WordPress site I don't want to say nine out of ten but it's somewhere between seven to seven to eight times out of ten it's a WordPress site okay what fits your style casual professional etc uh, the nice thing about WordPress is is that it can be something that is casual style hippie pro hardcore you know whatever it is that you want to apply to it the important thing is that you're able to apply your own sense of style if you can't apply your own sense of style to something then you're just trying to appeal to the common denominator for everybody and that may work up to a point but if you're a coach and specifically with coaches if you're in retail only that's different retail is where you're applying to a common denominator for everybody who's interested in your product if you're a coach you're building relationships with people so if you want to build relationships with people you need to show them who you are you need to make sure that your blog has your picture it has your style you say things about you you know look at the people that you already like who you look up to those are people that have said uh, probably a lot of personal things about themselves you know their story you know their background you know what they've been through you identify with who they are and if you're not making yourself available to your potential customers the way that they 
have made themselves available to you to know their story, then you're not forming relationships with people. And if you're in a relationship business, you've got to learn to make your story known to people. And that means customization, customization, customization. You cannot do cookie cutter if you're a coach. You can't. You just cannot do it. It's just not going to work. There will be nothing to distinguish you from the next guy, and that's dangerous. So what works with what you have? Well, you know, with WordPress, it really requires nothing except for having a domain name. And as far as hosting goes, well, you know, uh, you can either do the free thing with WordPress.com or you can do paid hosting, which I highly recommend that you get paid hosting so that you can do a lot more. WordPress.com is great. It's like Blogger. It's a free blogging service, uh, you know, WordPress.com. But you're limited in terms of what you can do. Um, Unlike what you may have heard, they're not going to shut you down, uh, you know, for, for doing business on WordPress.com. They're not going to. There are plenty of professional people that have run their sites, businesses off of WordPress.com and Blogger and stuff like that. You know, it, they're not going to shut you down just because you're doing business. It even says so in their terms of service. The only way that you're going to get shut down is if you're doing something illegal or if you're creating a problem for them in terms of spam or viruses. That's the only time they're going to shut you down. But that being said, I recommend that you get the paid version because you will be able to do a lot more. I tell people, you know, look, you can run a business with a free version of Blogger or WordPress.com, that's fine, but you can do a lot more if you have the paid version. I offer WordPress hosting, so of course I'm gonna recommend it to people, why? Because you're gonna make your money back if you do what it is that uh, I recommend that you do, and that's, it's proven time and time again, people who take my coaching, my advice, are making money. So um, will it work for you? Yes, it will work for you. If you can use Microsoft Word, you can blog. Uh, all the rest of it is stuff that you will you know, learn or you can have somebody help you with. My customers, I basically do the whole setup for them unless you're like a do-it-yourselfer type. If you're a do-it-yourselfer type, then you, know, you can get your own hosting um, and you know, do it that way. But either way, it will work for you. It, it, it works for people that didn't think it would work for them. So. Uh, you know, all you need to do is look for help. The great thing about WordPress, by the way, is there are more free videos on how to use WordPress than just about anything out there. That you're not going to find the same number of videos on how to use Joomla or Drupal or whatever. WordPress is number one for the common businessman. And if you're in business on the internet, you really need something like WordPress. Specifically, I recommend WordPress. It's going to do you right. Okay, so we moved out of thinking about using WordPress and now we're, we're using WordPress. So how do we know it works? Well, if you get sales or if you get leads, then you know it works. Well, are you, you know, if you're using WordPress and you're not getting sales or leads, well, what do you do? Well, what you do is you go to people that are getting sales and leads and ask them what they're doing. How do you do what they're doing? And, you know, um, I am a business coach I've worked as a business coach, coach professionally for other organizations, and I work with my coaches, sorry, I work with my clients as well. And so I will help them to get sales and get leads. Why? Because when they're successful, they're happy, and, they're, and happy customers are where it's at. So um, just ask if you're not getting sales or leads. Don't think that you should um, know how to do everything yourself. Uh, there's plenty of people that, that are out there that they think that they can do everything themselves, and that's totally fine if they can, but if they aren't, then what they need to do is they need to ask for some help. So um, what can you measure is the next question that you want to ask yourself if you've already decided on using WordPress. Well, you can measure your sales and leads, and you would use Google Analytics for that. So all of my customers are set up on Google Analytics so that they know uh, how many people are visiting their site. You can actually track when somebody leaves your site, where do they go? So you can look and see, okay, they went to this page. Uh, and then when they bought something, they went to this other page. So uh, for tracking everything inside your website, Google Analytics is an indispensable free tool. Um, and there's other things that you can use as well for that. 
So how can you monetize your site using like ROI, return on investment? Well, you make your sales and you collect your leads and you just figure out how much you're making. If you're making money, you're in the green. Remember over time, you're going to scale things up as you begin to work on the next step, step which is tweaking things. But you know, for the beginning part, you wanna figure out how are you gonna make sales and collect leads. If you don't have a mechanism for making sales and you don't have a mechanism for collecting leads, you're leaving money on the table. Don't leave money on the table. Take the money, it's yours, you earned it by setting up a business. You should feel totally comfortable about working your business the way that a business works. So don't leave money on the table. What is the time frame that you're gonna work with? I recommend one week for people. A month is a little too long. Uh, days can be a little misleading. You might do something on a Saturday and have different results than you would on a Wednesday. Um, so, you know, I would go on a weekly basis, uh, especially with WordPress. What is your sample size? You know, remember 5% is going to be your measure of success. Okay, so for visitors to WordPress, a WordPress site, like 100 visitors is a good measure. Um, you know, anything less than a half a percent out of 100, probably not probably not going to be fruitful. So you want to figure out a better way of doing things if you're only if you're not getting at least a half a percent out of 100. So did you make money or increase your leads with WordPress? Okay, uh, how you figure out whether or not you make money is you look at your profit and then you calculate your profit uh, for your leads by assigning a dollar value to them your cost of acquiring a customer is going to be the dollar value that you're going to assign. So rather than paying somebody else $100 for 100 phone numbers, if you get your own phone numbers by people filling out a form, then you have just earned a dollar for each one of those. And you know, chances are, if they're on your site and you gathered those leads yourself, they're gonna be wor worth a lot more than a dollar because they're not cold leads. They are hot leads. Next, we move on to tweaking. So after we have been reliably uh, creating uh, some testing to figure out what we're doing and making sure that it's going to work with WordPress, uh, can you repeat that success and tweak it? Yes, you can. WordPress will allow you to make daily and weekly testing, so that's not a problem. But the important thing is to remember that it's got to be reliably the same statistics. So don't just take one week's worth of data. Take two or three weeks' worth of data. Make sure that you're getting the same results. Uh, you know, uh, like if you're getting, you, you, if you do two blog posts a week or one or, you know, one every two weeks, use that time frame to figure out whether or not you're getting the same number of visitors as a result of your blogging activity. Should you change your measures or your art? Uh, well, you know, chances are you're not going to need to change your measures. Um, you you might, but uh, you know, and that's a little more of an advanced uh, sort of thing than we can cover right here, right now. Uh, but you would need to change your measures if you find out that you're not getting reliable statistics. Your art is something that you can change easily. Uh, you can change a graphic, background graphic, you can change colors, you can change text. You know, even adding a new blog post is a way of adding art to your uh, blog post. If you think about it, every time that you blog about something, you are changing the most recent item on your blog. So some blog titles are gonna get you more customers than others. Some are going to give you more people sharing your uh, blog posts than others. So that's important to know. How, um, how often should you tweak or retest? Well, it does depend on what you're actually testing, but it should be limited to on an as-needed basis. Don't think that you should be tweaking two different things during the same time frame. It could really ruin your uh, predictability of your results. So keep that in mind. It should be as needed, and that's, that's for WordPress. You only change stuff as needed. If it's not working, change it. So what can you improve on? Well, it depends on what needs improving. WordPress is a very self-contained system, so chances are you're not going to need to um, 
uh, change a lot. Chances are you'll just need to tweak a few things within it, like the background images, color, etc., those sorts of things. Can you scale it up? Well, the nice thing about WordPress is, is that you don't have to worry about scaling it up. Hopefully, you can, you can jump from 100 visits a day to 1,000 visits a day, and it's not going to hurt anything. Um, can you bet the farm with WordPress? Yes, as a matter of fact, uh, there are plenty of parties that do. Uh, if you go to wordpress.org, you'll see that uh, there are lots and lots of companies that use WordPress. For some reason, the only one that comes to mind whenever I talk about this is the Rolling Stones. So if the Rolling Stones depend on WordPress, chances are you can too. So going on, um, the next time that we're, I'm going to do a training is going to be about the fourth T in internet marketing. There is a fourth one. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit about what that is, but first... Uh, all of this training that I'm delivering here is free and it's supported by donations. So if you feel that you uh, got something of value out of this, if it helped to you know, fulfill on those intentions to help you save time, save money, uh, give you less overwhelm, uh, you know, $10 donation is great. You just go to electronicwordofmouth.com slash donate and there will be a donate button there. Or you can share this with other people, share this training with them, maybe if you have somebody who's saying, oh, I'm so overwhelmed with Facebook, this will be helpful to them. Uh, that'll be great if you could do that. Also, uh, this training and other trainings will be available at the Facebook group for Electronic Word of Mouth. You can search for Electronic Word of Mouth and you should be able to find my group pretty easily. Uh, and you can always go through my website, uh, electronicwordofmouth.com and look for the Facebook button there. Also, too, uh, many customers here are with electronic word of mouth, and so um, I would normally ask them if they want to say anything about my service. And uh, if you are interested in electronic word of mouth services, just go to electronicwordofmouth.com and contact me or go ahead and sign up for services. And normally this would be where I would offer the Q&A, but uh, th this is a video that I'm recording, so not at this time. So the fourth and final T in Internet marketing it's all about how you can prepare yourself and your site for the two different kinds of customers, self-starters and the hold my hand types. Okay, Self-starters are the people who think they can do everything themselves. They don't need anybody else's uh, help as they do it. They don't need a coach. You know, there, there are plenty of people who are out there that are like that. If, if you ever say to somebody, you know, it'd be great if you got some help with this, if you want better results, they'd be like, no thanks, I'm good, I can do it myself. They're going to do research and stuff like that and figure out how to do it themselves. Well, that's a lot of people, okay? Not everybody wants you to hold their hand. So there's those people and then there are the hold my hand customers. They want you to be there every step of the way. Two different types of people on different ends of the same spectrum. The fourth T in internet marketing addresses how to deal with both of those types of customers. Also, it addresses how to deal with impulse buyers versus relationship buyers. So if you ever go to a supermarket and you notice that all the candy is like at the eye level of a child, okay, that's designed for impulse buys. Mommy, mommy, I want this. It's right in front of my face. It's bright. It's shiny. It's, it's got a lot of colors. You know, it's, 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 you know, it looks really great. I want it. Those are impulse buys. Okay, a lot of people, whenever they go around buying things or looking for things on the Internet, there'll be a lot of people who are offering perfect impulse buys. They'll say things like, okay, the, this sale is going to last for the next 24 hours. Or they're going to say, Normally, this will cost you $5,000. Well, that's really true. Uh, my service is something, uh, somebody else is doing the same thing for $5,000, and they're not even offering hosting. <laughs> so, you know, um, some people will say, yes, this costs $5,000, but it costs less with me. These are like ways of, of uh, creating an impulse buy. Nothing wrong with it. You know, the world works that way. That's just how it is. It's appealing to the largest majority of people versus relationship buyers. So uh, relationship buyers are the people who they, they don't care if the Disney vault is closing. They're going to wait for the right time to get something. And the, those people are more 
interested in a relationship. So say, for example, if I tell you I'm going to help you make money and you believe me, then chances are you're not going to need to be pressured to buy something based on price, based on time, based on anything other than the fact that you, you believe that I will help you and I will help you. And then you say, okay, help me. So that's a relationship buy. So each of the problems that are presented by these two different spectrums of customers are going to be resolved by looking at what the fourth T in internet marketing is. When I was creating this originally, it was three T's. And then I've been dealing with this other thing of like how to articulate, well, there's these different spectrums of people who come to websites. How do you capture them? Well, that's what the fourth T is all about. And I will show you what that is in the next training. So remember that uh, also your reasons for buying something are mostly wrong. If you were to ask people, why did you buy something? Chances are it's not even going to be the, your reason why you think they bought. It's just not. Uh, and for that reason, you do need to do a lot of testing. That's why I created this Internet Marketing 3 T's is because you need to think, you need to test, and you need to tweak. And that is exactly the reason why, because your reasons for buying are pretty much wrong and you don't even know it. You won't know it until you think, test, and tweak. So stay tuned for the fourth T in Internet Marketing. So to review real quick, um, this is a new approach. You probably never heard this from anybody. If you have, you need to let me know because I created it uh, so to help you avoid overwhelm, to help you make better choices, help you save time, help you save money, and also help you make a profit. And also, I hope you weren't bored to death. So thank you so much. This training was sponsored by Electronic Word of Mouth, WordPress hosting at electronicwordofmouth.com.